Welcome to another Creative Anger Top Down Teardown. In this video, we will be tearing something down and then rebuilding it. We will be developing a mod for this camera slider where we will mount a stepper motor on the side and create a gear and pulley system to drive this camera slider. Many people may not realize I do everything completely alone. Even when I'm in my full set, I don't have camera operators to help me. I don't have any assistance. It is completely just me. There are times where I'm sitting at that table and I am recording and I want just a nice little smooth movement, you know, just a really smooth movement, but I can't get that. Why? Because I'm alone. My goal is to modify this camera slider so there is a side mounted stepper motor and a gear and pulley system that replaces the flywheel so I can remotely control from either a cell phone or a laptop or some other device this camera slider at minimal cost to myself. Comparable automated camera sliders tend to cost several thousand dollars, and some camera slider kits are only a few hundred dollars, but they're not really programmable. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say let's roll the intro, and then we'll get started on disassembling the slider so we can start taking some measurements. All right, so the first step to this entire thing is to take the slider carriage, slide it all the way off, and lock it in place. Next, I'm going to use a 532nd inch hex driver to remove the flywheel. It's held in place by a thumb screw, but this thumb screw gets tacked down pretty hard. At this point, the flywheel just lifts right off. Now, when you look at the design, I'm going to unlock this again so I can let it rotate. When you look at the design of how the flywheel attaches, it attaches to this sort of cog where it's got six indentations and there are three screws that poke down out of the bottom of the flywheel that line up with those indentations. These indentations are how the flywheel positively affixes to the slider mechanism itself. Knowing this, my first thought is, well, how do I go ahead and make a 3D printed gear that lines up with these indentations and sits right on top and it's held in place using the exact same thumb screw. My goal was to come up with a one-to-one -one replacement for the flywheel that goes right here onto this cog. In the end, after a bunch of experimentation, I settled on a two-part design. You have this gear, which has six pins. These are the pins that positively affix into the cog. And then you have this plate, which fits between the pins and the gear. Printing this plate separately from the gear instead of printing it all at once allowed me a little bit of freedom in terms of 3D printing. It made it so I didn't need to worry about support structures and breakaways after the fact. So after taking the two parts, sliding them together, I can now insert them onto the gear. Now I did print a third part. It's a little bit of a spacer. It gets inserted onto the thumb screw and then screwed into place. At this point, the question then becomes, well, Matt, that's awesome, but how do you plan on attaching a stepper motor? And well, that's quite simple. I made this thing. The side of the slider has a standard 3 8 inch hole, which is what this hole is for. This lines up perfectly here. And these four holes here are roughly four millimeters in diameter on this side, I used a tool to compress some nuts into some holes that were ever so slightly smaller than the nuts themselves, so they can hold themselves into place using compression. This ended up being an excellent system. I can mount it right here on the side, take a 3 8 inch bolt that is 3 quarter inch long, screw it into place. Now you might be asking, well, how the heck do you get the motor onto this? Well, it's not all that bad. I have a standard NEMA 23 motor mount that just bolts right onto the side. It's an extremely simple process. All you really need is a single screwdriver. I insert the two bottom screws first, tighten them up until there's some tension, then I insert the top two screws. At this point, they're barely finger tight. I need to loosen the two bottom screws so this plate will level with the top here. Once it's level, I go ahead and screw it down. Now we have a motor mount. I'm gonna put the flathead screwdriver away and get 
a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm also going to get the motor. I'll install the motor from the bottom and hand place two screws. These two screws will hold in the motor well enough for me to grab the other two screws. So far, the assembly has been very smooth. I've got the motor adapter plate, I've got the motor mount installed with the motor installed, and I've also got the gear installed. I need to install the pulley for the GT2 belt. With the pulley installed, I can now install the belt. This belt is uh, sewn together in a very poor manner. I don't have a proper GT2 splicing kit, so we're going to see how well this works and how long it lasts. So now we have a belt installed and it functions. It's not the smoothest of belts ever, but for the sake of testing, it's perfectly fine. Now we're going to plug in the stepper motor into a controller. In this case, we have a generic $18 special. Works not the best, but it works. All right, with power running to the system and the controller plugged in and the Arduino software open, I'm going to send some G code. And look at that! The whole system runs completely autonomously. Now, of course, I plan on making some modifications to make the system, number one, quieter, and number two, less bouncy, because, of course, this belt is definitely not ideal as it stands right now. However, I am capable of programming very, very slow moves. It is noisy, but it works! Through the use of some isolating rubber gaskets, I should be able to very greatly reduce the noise in this system to the point where it's almost silent. 95% of the noise that you can hear in the background of my voice right now is just resonance through the entirety of the camera slider as well as the surface of the desk. One thing that I can note is you can barely feel any vibration in the slider itself. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you some footage that's recorded utilizing this setup so you can see for yourself how smooth the video is or isn't. We'll see how it comes out. All right, so once everything's a little bit better tested and a little bit more mature, I do intend on releasing all of the schematics as an open source project. In addition, if you do not have a 3D printer, I will likely put the 3D printed parts up for sale so you can order them, we'll print them out and ship them to you. Now keep in mind that these parts will only work for a very specific model slider, but I will link the model slider below Please, if you have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, write in the comments down below. This is a discussion. I want to see what suggestions people have to improve on this design. The better this design, the more it will help people. This here helps me. And me releasing these plans sometime within the next couple of weeks will help everyone. You know the generic end of video spiel. Like, share, subscribe, hit that alert button. Everything you do helps. The more you share my videos, the more you give us a thumbs up, the more you like our videos, the more people come to me, and the more I'm able to produce. As always, see ya.